There's a thrilling verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 5. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance. Wonderful thing about the gospel when it's set free is that it carries its own authentication with it. I just got off the phone with a friend of mine, Gérald Saint Laurent, who works in Quebec, the east coast of Canada. He was reminding me of a story back in April of 1982 when the youngest member of a family of big lumberjacks, his name is Jacques, although his friends called him Tico, which was a bit of a play on Little Co, his last name. And he had been given a job as a bodyguard, a security guard for the mayor. On a particular occasion, they were having an event down at the city hall, the town hall. His father was there, and liquor was being distributed, and this man got a little too much in him, and, and so Jacques encouraged his father to head for home. But in the process, some of the concrete steps were broken on the town hall, and he fell and hit his head and was killed. So the mayor later on said to Jacques, you'll probably want to sue and get a settlement for your mother. Yes, well, here's a lawyer that will help you. And, and so he entrusted the case to this lawyer, but the lawyer happened to be in the pocket of the mayor through the case so the city wouldn't have to pay much. Jacques became very angry and he would go around the house cursing and swearing and one day his mother gave him a New Testament and said, you, you know, you just can't be acting like this. You've turned into a wicked man. You need to read this. And so he began to dutifully read the Bible. One day as he was reading, he came to a particular scripture that said that if you have anything against your brother, you should leave your offering and go and be made right to him. And he realized the mayor and I, well, we go to the same Catholic church and I hate his guts. I can't do this anymore. And so one evening he showed up at the mayor's house. No doubt the mayor thought this was it for him. But he said, no, no, no. He said, I've been reading in the, in the Bible and the Bible says I need to forgive you. And so I, I want you to forgive me. The mayor was absolutely flabbergasted. Well, shortly after this, one of the Christians in the local fellowship had advertised to sell some cows. Jacques used to do butchering with his father and sell meat around the doors. And so he went to see this Christian farmer and said, uh, I'd like to buy one of your cows, but I'm not ready just now. If you could keep it through the summer, I'd like to buy it in the fall and butcher it for the winter months. Could you do that for me? And the man said, well, normally I would not do that, but for the sake of the Lord Jesus, I will do it. And he said, what, what do you mean by that for the sake of the Lord Jesus? And so this Christian had the opportunity of sharing the gospel with uh, Jacques standing there in the barn. He said, you know, we're having a gospel meeting tonight. I'd like you to come along. And Jacques came and heard the gospel. And the first time he heard it, he put his trust in Christ. Well, he went and told the priest all about this. And the priest was uh, quite concerned and said, no, no, no. You know, you shouldn't be going down there. That's a sect. And we have the large crowd here. They just have a few people down there. But as he continued to read, he discovered that it was the broad road that leads to destruction. That's where the crowd is. And it's just the few that are leading to life. And so he thought, I better go where the, the little group is. <laughs> and so he did. Well, just recently, he had been witnessing for some time to his neighbors and they had rebuffed him. They were not really interested in the gospel. And then this couple became increasingly depressed and disheartened and pretty much gave up on life. In fact, they were driving down the road and the man said to his wife, here comes a truck, should I go for it? In other words, head-on collision, killing ourselves. And his wife said, I'll close my eyes, you do what you have to do. Well, somehow the Lord kept them going on the road until they got into the little town of saint anne de mont on the north shore of the Gaspé. And they pulled into a, a little parking lot there, and who did they see but 
their neighbor Jacques. The man said to him, you know, your God has, has let us down. He, he doesn't want us. And Jacques said, no, no, my, my Lord Jesus wants to save you. He does. And he gave the man a gospel tract. He went into the store. He was in for some time. But as, as the man read that tract, the gospel came like light to his soul, and he trusted the Lord as the Savior. When Jacques came out of the store 20 minutes later, the man said, I've got it, I've got it. And here he had put his trust in the Savior. And shortly thereafter, his wife also trusted the Lord. And so Jacques brought this couple along to the little fellowship of believers there. They've been such a joy always reading their Bibles, eager to learn, wanting to be baptized, wanting to remember the Lord and the breaking of bread. What a wonderful thing it is to see the outworking of this very verse, that the gospel is not simply words. There's power there because the Holy Spirit is behind it. We came not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance.